Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. It's Friday afternoon. I was ready to call it a day. I get a call from a shop that's more than an hour away. They want this Mazda diagnosed. Long history with this thing. I show up and... <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, like I said, long history. No crank, no start. Towed it here from another shop, and at that shop it drove there. Apparently it had $3,000 worth of suspension work done, and then it never ran. Insane. Um, they tried a new alternator for some reason. No change. The instrument cluster is completely dead. Right now the key is on. And the only thing we have blinking is the little theft light. You know, the door jar works, but nothing else. Here, I'll show you. So, the shop owner here, Don, he did a quick check. He's, you know, booked solid, but like he's like, I'll take a look at this, um, do a preliminary. Uh, Chuggy said the meter fuse that powers up the instrument cluster in this little fuse box It's missing right now. He said that Blows as soon as you turn the ignition key on so that is a great direction to start with Here's a little cover So meter 10 amp fuse uh, Let's pull up a wiring diagram see what that fuse feeds and then install a high amp test light from you know, 4 or 5 amps see if indeed there is a short circuit to ground on that tree. The modules that are online the GEM, PCM and EATC this is the temperature control but our instrument cluster is obviously offline transmission control module is offline ABS is offline uh, I don't know if this is all wheel drive or not but that's uh, that's what we have. So PCM, we have theft detected, vehicle mobilized. Yep, lost communication with TCM, lost communication with ABS control module, lost communication with instrument panel cluster. So indeed, those modules are supposed to be online. They're not. At least TCM, ABS, and instrument cluster. Uh, amplifier, not sure. Restraint control module. Oh, airbags are offline. Okay. And four by four. I'm not sure if that car, if this is equipped. Um, so let's do some research on this Mazda. It's a 2007 CX-7 with the turbocharged 2.3 liter engine. Hopefully I can get home for dinner. Alright, here we go. Test light plugged in, 4 amps on the meter fuse. We turn the key on. Boom. Super bright light. There's definitely a short to ground. Now we need a wiring diagram. Well, unfortunately here we have the worst case scenario with this meter fuse. It goes everywhere and we don't have the OE diagram. There's only a redrawn on all data. This is the only one. There's no OE power distribution diagram, which is kind of disappointing. So meter fuse, it goes to anti-theft door locks, exterior lights, headlights, instrument cluster, body computer, navigation system. Then it branches off to ABS and transmission systems. That makes sense. That's why we can't talk to those. Then it branches out the transmission system, starting and charging system. Finally, through a DSC fuse 7.5 amp to ABS system. So nothing's easily accessible here. We could pull this fuse out. I actually just did that. And the test lights, well, they're still bright. So the DSC fuse, it's part of this weird fuse assembly. ABS 1, ABS 2, DSC 7.5 amp. So, no change there. We'll plug this back in. Uh, what? You know, where would you go next? Obviously... We're leaving on this blue 
and red wire, then it goes somewhere. So we either have to do wiggle checks, visual inspection, keep the test lights on, and if they flicker, then we know that something changed. Uh, we can definitely unplug this instrument cluster because A, it's beeping, and it's, you know, it's on the circuit. All right, so sometimes the quickest way to start and get a direction is just unplug bulk connectors while looking at your test light. We want to see where is this current going? Is it going under the hood? Is it going under the dash? So I found this big bulk connector. I'm like, you know what, let's start here. This is our fuse. So keys on, and with the connector plugged in, you guys can see the test light in the picture here. I'll loop it around like this. If I plug in the connector, there's our short. We heard stuff going on under the hood. So now we need to find out which wire is carrying the current. And well, it's going to be green with a red stripe, or it can turn into a green with a black stripe. So let me see here which. Now this is the instrument panel harness, and I think that that goes to towards the engine. Yeah, it's a bulk connector. So there's a green with a white stripe. So now using an amp clamp, we can see which wire is carrying that current, and we'll track it down that way. We have to split the system. All right, so a little change of direction here. I got power and ground straight from the battery. So from battery positive through the test light to this wire that feeds everything, all right? I don't want to depend on the ignition key. I'm going to turn the ignition key off. The short is there. Now we can start unplugging harnesses. Uh, why did I do that? Because I wanted to eliminate the ignition key feed from the equation. We unplug this big connector, that big red wire, that's the feed for the ignition switch, so obviously the test lights would turn off. We only want to find a path from that terminal, from the fuse terminal, to ground. Okay, so test lights are lit. I'm just unplugging connectors. We've got one big bulk connector unplugged, two big bulk connectors unplugged. Let's unplug these right here. While looking at our test light, oh, man. these are a pain. That one, no. Unplug this one. Ooh. Let's see. Okay. So, that's cool. This connector, that's key. Let's plug this one back in. Let's plug everything else back in. And this one up here. So, we have one connector that we unplug it. Short goes away. And we have... How many wires do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like twelve wires maybe. Okay, great. So now, which one of these wires is carrying the current? We can use the amp clamp to determine that, and then hopefully Mazda is kind enough to provide connector number information, and we'll see where these pins go. So they go, looks like from the main harness here, to the harness that goes back towards the rear of the vehicle. Um, we can even plug the cluster back in, see if it came back to life with that little connector unplugged. Let me uh, let me do that. Oh, okay, now we're getting somewhere. We have a turn signal. Yep, okay, ignition switch. Now the cluster's on all the time. Obviously, mobilizer's not happy. Um, oh, okay, well, I am feeding that constant power now. See, the short's gone. So, if we plug in a fuse, let's see, disconnect our test light. 
Um, let me plug in a fuse now, and we'll see if any of the modules came back online, and then we'll find out where this connector goes. All right, so I reinstalled the fuse. The only thing that's unplugged is this connector right here. So let's turn the key on. This car should start up and run right now. Let me check the engine oil. This car has been off the road for more than a year. We're about now half an hour into this diagnosis, and I think we'll be able to get it started. All right, I checked the engine oil. It's full, it smells like gasoline, it's really black, but I feel safe cranking it. No crank, TCS off. Let's scan it, see if there's anything offline. Do we see, we don't see a Prindle, so that makes sense. Let me push the brake and switch the gears. No Prindle, so still no crank, so, but we're getting really close. All right, so definitely progress. Instrument cluster is back online, ABS is back online, TCM and airbags are still offline. Uh, let's clear all the DTCs out and see what sets Next, I'm sure we'll have no communication with the transmission control module. All right, so PCM says lost communication with TCM, fine. ABS says, yeah, I mean, it's uh, lost communication with four wheel drive clutch control module. Okay, interesting. So 4x4 is supposed to light up. Instrument cluster says lost communication with TCM, RCM, four-wheel drive control module, fuel sender circuit open. That's probably because we unplugged this harness here. Okay, great. So I feel like we're about halfway. We have to track down where the short circuit is going you know, downstream of that connector so we can hook up our test light, find the right wire that's carrying the current when, you know, when it's shorted. Um, but we got some modules online, but if this TCM is not online, we're not going to start. All right, so I plugged this connector back in, test lights are back in, and we have one amp going, now let's see, which way is it going? It's coming from the dash through my meter this way, so we see a negative 0.9 into that connector on this green and yellow wire. I'll prove it to you, I'll unplug it. That's exactly our short to ground. So the short's going to be downstream of this connector and this all-wheel drive module is indeed on that meter fuse so what we could do is either depin this wire see what's offline see if the transmission controller is online um, maybe try to follow that aftermarket distribution diagram because they, they don't give you connector views, connector locations, OE power distribution diagrams, so we're really handicapped in this car. Alright, so I got this connector unclipped from the body, and this green and yellow comes in here, and on the back side, it, there's actually two wires in that pin. A green and black, and a green and yellow. Well, guess where the current's going? It's going on the green and black. And if you see the amp clamp, there are 0.9 amps. If I unplug the test light, it goes to zero. So let's look at the wiring diagram at the, the modules that are still offline. Which one is fed by the green and black, not the green and yellow? All right, so all-wheel drive control module, you can see that from the meter fuse, we go through a green and red, green and yellow, and then a green and black. The transmission controller, it goes through green and red, green and white, green and black. And then right there it says F, that guess I is instrument, F is maybe floor, EM is, you know, engine room. But the all-wheel drive, R is rear harness, I'm assuming, so this goes from instrument to rear. What we can do is snip this wire, the green and black, and see if the car starts and runs. And we can pull in the shop and do a more, a better visual inspection underneath to see where the green and black wire is going towards the all-wheel drive module. 
All right, here we go. I usually don't do this, but the shop owner says, let's just drive it in the garage, whatever the quickest way is. Green and black wire, there's the test light. I'm gonna snip this, and that light should turn off. Okay, now let's reinstall our 10 amp fuse, see if our transmission controller is back online, if we have a Prindle, and let's see if this car cranks up. What do you think, Don? Place your bets now, is it gonna work? It's, it's been like a year and a half, I guess. I don't know the whole story. Do we have a Prindle? No. We don't have Prindle, so it's, it's definitely not going to crank. Dang it. Um, let's look at the scanner. So we'll back out. Was that fuse you put in good? Was that a... Um, smart scan again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Since okay. the cluster's on, you know, it's lit up, so the fuse is good. Let's see if anything came back online. TCM. Still offline, 4x4, still offline, ABS, so we didn't gain anything there. Let's uh, clear DTCs. We still got three modules, they're offline on that green and black tree. So instrument cluster says, yep, TCM, four-wheel drive, and restraints. TCM, okay, and PCM, what? Let's find where the TCM lives. I think it's under the hood. Maybe we can see if that wire is there and if it's still shorted. You know, give it a power somehow. We just need a Prindle. Well, we got so far with this method, so let's keep going. Now I have a piercing probe on the wire that we snipped, so the current's going that way. We have a short circuit, and I just started unplugging connectors that look like they have a green and black wire. So there's a BCM connector right there, I unplugged that. And then there's another box up here, just for the hell of it. I unplugged the box, and look, our light is out. Light is back on. So that box is shorting, for some reason it's shorted out. Oh. Oh. So let's leave that box unplugged. Get these two wires reconnected again. I don't know what that box is. If it's a transmission controller, we're out of luck. Um, how could a power feed be shorted through a module? I guess, uh, well, we proved it. Unplug the module and short goes away. All right, so with that whatever mystery module unplugged, I reconnected the um, green and black wire there. Did anything come back online? Well, no we did not. Our transmission's offline, restraints, and four-wheel drive. So, um, I don't know what to make of that. We have to figure out what that box is and why it's shorted out. So I snuck in there with my phone, took a picture of the mystery module. There's the part number, G1701. Typed it in Google, transfer case control module. So we unplugged that, the short goes away, but we still don't have communication with the airbags or the transmission. So let's look up uh, the transmission diagram, which is right here, TCM, and let's see. Do we have, you know, this can these can lines, BCM diagram, where do those come from? Do those go through? The all-wheel drive control module, it doesn't look like it. There's just two lines coming out of here. Two lines coming out of here. What about this engine B plus 25 amp fuse, main fuse block? Let's check that, make sure the power is good to this TCM. Then we're gonna have to go to the TCM itself. So engine B plus 25 amp fuse is right there. And it is hot on both sides, that feeds the TCM, so we gotta find the TCM itself. All right, so air cleaner's out, and this is the TCM that piggybacks right on top of the transmission. And the connector is right back there with a red clip. Let's unclip it, take it out. It looks, definitely looks crusty, but can't tell by the outside. We have to check powers and grounds communication 
at this main connector. Let me get that unplugged. TCM unplugged. Main power feed is good. And then the ignition power source right here is, is also good. So we have good powers. Let's check the ground. So test light. Test light works. Let's check the main ground. Main ground is good. Uh oh. we we have to check these communication lines. If those are good, then the TCM is also bad. So we have a blown four-wheel drive module. We might have a blown transmission control module. Alright, so powers and grounds check out at the TCM. We need to check communication lines. I'm just using the little two-channel scope by Z-Way. Uh, pin 6 and 14 on this connector. So right now on pin 14 it is a gray and white. And we see some kind of can signal. I think two and a half to three and a half. Let's move to um, let's see here, pin one, two, three, four, five, six. So I was on pin 14. Let's go to here. And we have the mirror image. But, in, you know, it's not going to look pretty because the module is disconnected, the terminating resistors are offline. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, some modules got damaged. And I suspect after $3,000 of underbody work, there must have been some welding done. So we got a blown 4x4 module, a blown transmission control module, um, possibly a blown airbag module. I don't know, but we'll start with those two. And Don here, hopefully he can source them on eBay. Uh, you don't have to program these, I don't think. Just plug and play. And get this car back on the road. So, unfortunate. Uh, this is not an easy diagnosis. We had a short to ground. We started with that. It was being shorted through the 4x4 module. So, unplug that, fix the short to ground. Uh, the instrument cluster came back online and the ABS did, so that's good. And the PCM appears to be fine. Uh, it's just looking for that Prindle display. Um, so we need at least two modules here on the drivetrain. TCM and 4x4. Let's get this car back on the road. Airbags? I have no idea. <laughs> so uh, we'll do a follow-up once Don gets those modules. By the way, I had the key off doing a network measurement. Um, you want to have the key on, obviously. So, there is the can high. It's going, so one volt per division, about two and a half to three and a half volts. And then, can low, go to this pin right here. That's going to be two and a half down to one and a half. So, can is good, all the wiring is fine. Modules are definitely bad. So a quick follow up on the 2007 Mazda CX-7. No crank, disaster car. Uh, so when I left, I called, needed a new transmission control module to crank. Module was blown, so was the four wheel drive module. And why was the alternator replaced? So pieces of the puzzle are coming together. So apparently, this is my hypothesis, was at the first shop where they did all the suspension work, it wasn't welding that fried the modules. I think they tried jump starting it backwards. Classic, reverse the polarity, boom, your alternator gets cooked. And in this case, some of the modules got cooked as well. Uh, really bad scenario. So the the customer apparently, you know, drove the car there, paid him three grand for suspension work, and the car never ran after that. And it was over a year. Finally, got brought to my friend uh, Don's shop, and we diagnosed it there. Um, and then I told Don, yeah, get some modules on eBay, get this car running. But the customer decided to just scrap the car, just let it go. He said he sank too much money into it, which is unfortunate. Um, 
you know, the car didn't have that many miles on it. It was kind of a, you know, kind of a toilet, but it is what it is. So I guess we'll never see that car back on the road again, but that was a pretty cool case study. Tracing a short to ground uh, with uh, lacking service information, that's always fun. But with a test light and an amp clamp uh, and using your intuition, you can get pretty far. So we found the short circuit. Unfortunately, the car still didn't crank because the transmission controller was also fried. So that's it for this one. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.